Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to the Cloud Show. And today, as always, we have a wonderful superstar as our guest. We're going to talk to Robert Falkison, and he is very much involved in this AI space right now. All the companies, all the customers of, of, of his company are calling for AI services on how do we do this, how do we get it into production, and what should we do with it? So we're going to talk about how to roll AI into the enterprise. What do you do? How do you do it? And with that comes a, a huge challenge in terms of, of data sovereignty. How do we manage data regulations and moving data? And are we allowed to use the, the cloud services and so forth? And of course, while that is taking so long, how do you avoid in an enterprise to uh, catch on that, that horrible disease called shadow IT, where people are just like, I'm not going to wait for AI. I'm just going to do it my own way. And you get a lot of shadow IT. How do you avoid this? So all up on, on, on AI and enterprise with Robert Falkerson. Welcome to the Cloud Show. Hello, Robert. Hello, Magnus. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. And this is a, such an exciting topic that you brought for us today. But first, let's let's check up on you. Who are you and, and what do you do? Yes, so uh, I'm the CTO of a company called Active Solution. And we specialize in cloud development, heavily focusing on the Azure PaaS services. And also we're doing quite a lot of AI development. And actually, we have been for quite many years. Uh, yeah. I think we did our first cloud-based uh, AI solution some 12 years ago or something like that. Right. So yeah, cloud, POS services, AI, all coming together. And multiple MVPs work in your company and, and yes. have a really solid base of, of, uh, of uh, hardcore deep dive tech people. Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. And and uh, uh, right now you have, what is it? Is it only on, only one AI MVP or is it two? Or? Uh, it should be two now, I guess. Two. With Alan okay. also switching. <laughs> to, yeah, to yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's really Peter, cool. or Peter on a whole as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so you're based out of Stockholm, Sweden. And yes, that's exactly. the States. Right. There we so go. very happy to be here at the Cloud yeah, Show. Thank you, very you much. thank you very much for being here. Um, excellent to have you. And and I know that when I, I reached out to you to talk about uh, these things, uh, you know, get on the show as, as the star of the show, I knew that we were going to talk about AI. I was like, he's going to say AI. And you did. You said AI. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, easy guess. Yeah. No, but it's it's interesting because, um, as I said, we've been working with it for quite a couple of years. And now that the generative AI and cognitive services have exploded and there is a lot of interest, we've yeah. seen the, the, last, the last year, we've seen a lot of experimenting, a lot of proof of concepts. But the last m couple of months, we're now seeing companies, organizations, enterprises, trying to figure out how to get this into production, how, how to really start using it. And also, yep. there's kind of this huge demand from the business to be able to use these kind of services, to be innovative, to, yep. to come up with new ideas, to optimize their processes. And there's mm -hmm. a huge press pressure now on, <laughs> on the existing organizations to come yep. up with ways of allowing this in a good way. Yeah, definitely. I, I get it. I mean, basically, it's it's everything we did before, all of our great products and services we did before, except now with AI. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and the services are out there. Yeah. Uh, people can sign up for subscriptions on, on a lot of different services now and do stuff that you couldn't dream about just a couple of years ago. And of course, the organizations and different departments, they, they need it. They want it. They, they yeah. need it for the competition. They need it to, to innovate. They need it to go faster, yeah. uh, have better time to market. So 
what we've been seeing is that either you you try to structure it and allow it in a structured good safe way where you can uh, make sure that um, you follow the regulations um, gdpr for example if you're in the eu and uh, or you will have shadow it that will pop up and you will have um, at, at kind of in the beginning of the of the cloud services exclusion i, I think there's a parallel to that yeah, and, and, and that's that's a really <clears throat> that's a really tough challenge to have, I would say, that that if if it's taking too long to do it the right way, we're gonna do it anyway. Yeah. Uh, in any way we can. Um, yeah, the, the marketing manager will will yeah. flesh out his I'm, card I'm and, the, and yeah, her yeah. card and, and kind of sign yeah. up anyway. Yeah. So, so so what what is the sort of the I know, I know it's a big big thing to answer in, in a short time. But what is like the structured approach? What does it like entail in at a high level? What how would you go about it if you're a large company? You're gonna yeah. use AI now and how? <laughs> yeah. So um now I'm I'm heavily focused on the Microsoft Azure platform. So this, sure. this is gonna be colored by that, of course. The the other cloud platforms have, have other other ways of doing it, but uh, on the Azure platform. You have this concept of a landing zone yeah and the landing zone is a way it's a concept that makes it possible to deploy resources in a way that are secure by default so you set up this this zone where you deploy your resources mm -hmm. where it already has cost control it has the monitoring it has the security security boundaries it has yeah. the secure exit it might need to internal resources. Yeah. Everything set up uh, the way it should be. And there are excellent <laughs> reference landing zones that you can use from Microsoft that, that will show you how to do this. So that is, that is one part of the puzzle uh, that you need to be aware of. And then there is also the possibility to use these services from in Azure, from Microsoft, in a way that makes it possible to decide what region in the world will your data be stored in and right. guarantee that there will be no training on your data, uh, your customer's data. Uh, it's, it's all, it's all going to be in your hands and you will have total control of it. And, and you'll, it, you will, it, they will make sure that if you, store it in, in uh, the US, it will be stored in the US and not go anywhere else. So that, yeah, yeah. that is that is a big, big thing part. That, 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 that sort of the data sovereignty and the data privacy, yeah. right? So that, yeah. that a, a, a company's data is, is, their, is their oil, it's their bloodstream, it's, it's their life. Uh, yeah. Of course, if that went to someone else, it would be catastrophe and, and it, it yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't work at all. And it would be, well, it would destroy the company that offered the AI service if they leaked the data of, of the customer. Yeah. And so, so that, that is kind of making it possible to have a technical IT platform yep. ready to start yep. experimenting in and start to move fast in, but under very controlled um, limited Boundaries. forms. Yeah, you get a but box. Like a, 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 box. A, 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 a box, but the limitations aren't uh, really in um, in the form of limited services. You can you can still use the open AI services, but inside of the cloud platform. Yeah, yeah. So you will still be able to use, uh, for example, uh, chat, uh, not chat GPT, but the GPT models. Yeah. Uh, and the DALI models, but uh, in a very controlled environment. Yeah. So you were saying you were saying uh, in the in the start of, of this this uh, conversation that you your company are focusing Active Solution uh, focusing a lot on on platform services and and that's yep. been the case since the dawn of of the cloud that this has been yep. a, a focus like you should be using platform services you shouldn't be using infrastructure services and I think that is the the key thing that has happened here I, I hope that you agree that we have turned a corner and come to a place where all of these AI services are exactly that. They are platform services. You just connect your data and you start using it. Yeah. 
exactly. So, and that, that, that is also true about these services. So what Microsoft is doing is they're, they're making the same services that you have available or the same models available as services inside of the Azure platform. Um, and that, and they also providing the, the guidance with the cloud adoption framework that you can use to plan and, and uh, plan your organization for it and plan yeah. your strategy around it. And they're also providing guidance uh, in form of the well architected framework mm -hmm. that will help you uh, live up to all the uh, all the regulations yeah. uh, that you need and all the security audits and all all these kind of things that you need to live up to as an enterprise organization while still being able to provide the business with the ability to be really fast and try out these services and build right proof of concepts and even go to production with them under safe um under safe uh, yeah, in, like in, in a safe in a safe way yeah 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 i get it um so so let me let me ask you this so th this seems like a lot right there is this cloud adoption framework there's with the, with the landing zone concept there's well architected yep. framework and then there's data regulations and all the things this actually does sound like a complicated thing. And, and I suppose this is an open goal. How do you start doing it? Well, you hire your company. Sure, that's that's an open goal. But I mean, how does a company approach something like like this in, in a way that makes uh, you know financial sense and that they feel that, yeah. that they are in control of security and so forth? It's, it's yeah. huge. So, so yes, but I would say that, for example, the cloud adoption framework that will help you guide your business around your cloud journey including the the ai part yep. that it's it's not really complicated it gives you a lot of guidance so microsoft has kind of packaged this up as a guidance package for your organization that you can um take take part of it's available online of course so, so it's it's really easy to um get assistance and get guidance from the cloud adoption framework right. it's, it's 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 not hard it's, it's kind of made to be able to guide you in these questions yeah. and it's the same thing with the uh, well architected framework is basically um best practices and checklists mm -hmm. and assessments that will guide you through the whole process of doing yeah. it and then of course the implementation details you you will probably need help from people who have done it before. Right. You, you need to find some experienced people. Either, of course, hi, uh, hire them if you can find them, right? <laughs> yeah. or, just, or just or just get the, get them in, in, in some way to, to guide, help help the process uh, along more, more quickly and more to the point, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's a good point. So about this problem then the uh, flip side of the coin if if it's taking too long or or if the the company isn't really on the ball to set up this this secure and, and safe space called a landing zone or or, or how, yep. what not right um the, the shadow it thing what do we do to uh, avoid it or how do we how do we manage that if it happens what have you seen some bad s scenarios out there yeah yeah i mean it's it it is it is hard if you don't start moving pretty fast and and try to tackle this problem uh, it's it's going to pop up especially in in larger organizations it's yeah. it's going to pop up and um so the the advice is to to like start looking into this now right away mm -hmm. how how can i make the cloud journey including the ai parts um as good as possible in a structured way with the help of all the guidance that is out there. Uh, and I mean, there, there's, it's, it's very hard to pin down shadow IT services being um, bought from uh, people with um, like, yeah. with, with access to a card. <laughs> it's, yeah, with a credit it's, card, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's very hard to get a grip on. So, yeah. What you have to do is kind of turn it around and offer the business a way to be innovative 
to be uh, faster to the market to to let them use these services but in a controlled and good way that's a good point yeah so um in terms of that in terms of like guardrails or or setting up protections it'll be things like for data sovereignty we'll set up a policy that says you can only deploy databases in the following regions exactly yeah. exactly so you will give your business a way to use these services but um under the controlled form that you decide upon and that makes it possible to live up to the regulations and and uh, also have cost control so yeah. you you won't have any <laughs> bad experience in, in that oh, yeah, area I mean, that, which which big, yeah that's a big thing as well if you if you uh, if you uh, turn the knob on on a yeah. service on, on one of these ai services and you're not really sure what you are doing you're just i'm yeah. just gonna try this thing goes to 11. i'm gonna yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna turn it to 11 but you don't know what you're or, doing that can actually bite you really hard yes or or something gets really popular and uh, you start getting a lot of requests and you start using the services which are pay on demand uh, in some cases a lot and you don't have the uh, cap on the cost uh, set up properly that that's also uh, of course an issue a risk a big risk it really is so so what is the what is the key um controls to to um to set a cap on on consumption how do you do it yeah so so if you use the services in azure you can set an actual cap on the actual consumption but what what you can also have is is good way of being notified when it start reaches these levels so you mm -hmm. you have a good cost control built into the platform and you can also set caps on individual usage of models for example right. so you can cap the usage for a specific use case inside of your organization and make sure that you won't have any bad surprises right <laughs> in the end of the month yeah. right because if you hit the cap you you yeah. have used it a lot and then you have to start asking the question, are we using it properly? What are we using it for? Is there a business yeah. value enough from this yeah. cost? But it, it, even more um, importantly, you can get an alarm even before that. So you know that, okay, now we got a spike. It might be a good thing. Our business is going good. It's getting popular. We are um, getting uh, hyped somewhere, which might be good. Then I can... Turn it, turn it up, but in a controlled way. In a controlled way. That's, I think, is, is good advice. And I think that is what people need to hear now, that they are a little bit scared of the thing they don't know how to manage yet. And and uh, there are controls in place for you to, to slow things down. Exactly. Yeah. Well, what I really like you saying here today is the part where you said that um, the only way to really combat or, or 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 keep away shadow it is to ensure that you can offer a really good platform for them to work in so they want exactly they, they want to use that one and yeah. and the way to do that is to use the the existing guidance to set things up in a proper way so that people will have a quickly enough will will feel that they get you know the ability to start using these things yeah exactly yeah. and you can still set it up in a way that makes it easy for the business to develop their new services, to deploy their new services, and to get it mm -hmm. into not only into proof of concepts and experiments, but also into production, but all under secure and controlled forms and with cost <coughs> controls and with policies that will control where the data is stored. And also making sure that your data is your data and it, it isn't going anywhere. You can even have your own encryption of the data with your own key right. if you if you like to. Yeah. So like a whole bring your own key thing. And, yeah. and at that point, not even Microsoft can can get into your data if they no. if, if they wanted to, which they don't. Let's let me underline that <laughs> they don't. <laughs> but no. but but they, in fact they couldn't. Uh, yeah. because it's gonna be impossible. Um, exactly. All right, good, good. All right, brilliant. Well, thank you for coming and, and sharing all of this. This was a, a, a big lot for a, a short conversation. And this yeah. could go, this, if we had the time, we could go for, for several hours on this topic. No Most problem. definitely. 
most yeah. definitely. But I want to thank you very much for being with us today on the Cloud Show. And uh, thanks for everyone who, who was listening or who is watching this right now. And uh, everyone have a good evening or day or wherever time zone you are in. All right. Thank you, Magnus. Thanks. Bye.